The chief executive of staff who has bought the media company for a buck from Australian Nine Entertainment says she has no other financial backers at this stage and will look to give staff a stake in the business through shares. The buyout follows failed negotiations between NZME and Nine. Staff boss and new buyer Sinead Boucher says she's pleased to bring the business and all its mastheads back to New Zealand ownership, all for just a dollar. I asked her if she's paying cash. I don't know yet. I have until the end of the week to hand over the money and I really am hoping that I get to front up with my cash, but I'm not sure. So is it cause for celebration or does it fill you with trepidation? Well, I think it's a mixture of both. Um, I mean, I am feeling really overwhelmed today by all the positive reaction I've had from staff and from um, readers and customers. Um, but it's definitely a big undertaking and certainly not one that I, you know, um, sort of planned out for my career when I started off at Aoraki School of Journalism in Timaru. <laughs> Um, but I think it's great to be able to bring the business into, you know, New Zealand ownership and to look forward to a future where staff can have a direct stake in that and we can sort of be, you know, more masters of our own destiny. OK, so who's in this with you? Who are your backers? So at the moment, it is just me. And um, being able to do that with Nine, just working over the last couple of weeks to secure that um, transfer of ownership, the next step now is to sit down and um, work out how to introduce a model that allows for some staff direct ownership and also leaves open, you know, the ability for us to potentially bring in other investors or partners down the track. So do you have investors or partners lined up or are you at this stage completely on your own here? Um, We haven't got anybody lined up, but over the last, you know, it's been quite a long time since stuff has been up for sale in one way or another. And there are definitely, um, you know, other businesses and other people that um, we would like to um, work more closely with or do some partnerships with who are also interested in that but have been um, deterred for a while by the uncertainty around our ownership and what that might mean. So like who? I have no doubt there's lots of opportunities out there. Probably not anybody I would, um, who would appreciate me talking about it in in public now. But um, I think what, you know... Now that we're um, on our own and not part of a bigger company, it does definitely give us a lot of freedom to start to think about the kind of business we want to build out and who um, who else we might want to work with to be able to achieve that. So what have you taken on in terms of liability and debt? Is that all on you? Um, we haven't taken on any debts, but obviously have taken on the responsibility for um, the company and with that comes the livelihood for all the people who work here. So... You know, that wasn't something that I took on lightly. Um, but stuff has always been, even though it's been owned by an international parent in one way or another, um, it's always been self-funding and self-managing as a business. And so we were in a good position um, before we hit the COVID crisis. Um, during those weeks of lockdown, the business was really severely impacted as advertising, you know, fell away, not surprisingly. Um and now that yeah, so we can start to see we're sort of climbing out of that, we were able to manage our way through that with the help of the wage subsidy, with um, you know things like good cost management and staff taking a voluntary pay cut. Um, but you know, we, when we look ahead, and when I sort of entered this, it was on the understanding that we would need to be able to stand on our own two feet into the foreseeable. So how are you going to do that? How quickly will you adapt or change the model? And what what are you looking at? I think the first thing I need to do is sit down with my um, executive team, who only heard about this this morning also. Um, and you know, we were obviously already working on our initiatives and plans for the next financial year. And now we need to look at and consider those in the light of the change of ownership, um, whether they are still opportunities we want to pursue or whether we do things differently. So I think that's sort of the work that we'll be doing over the next couple of weeks. You've got to do things differently, don't you, Sinead? You've got to do things differently because donation model, cap in hand, asking people for donations, is not a long-term business model, is it? Well, it has proven to be a very successful model for The Guardian. Um, And I think when we introduce... So firstly, yes, we absolutely need to do things differently, as do, you know, the rest of the media industry as well. We know our traditional media uh, our business models have been disrupted and challenged over the last few years. 
And a change of ownership is just not the magic solution to fixing all of that. Um, but, um, you know, during the COVID crisis, we launched the Stuff Supporters Program, which um, we had been working on for a few months. It's just sort of probably fortuitous timing, where we ask readers to contribute financially to support the journalism they value. It's just another way of approaching something um, versus putting up a hard paywall or whatever else. Will you look that, at a paywall, you know, Sinead? Well, we have looked at it. Already. Again, um, again, and, though? Oh, yeah, no, no, what I was going to say is we have looked at it as part of a general move to look at, I think, um, you know, like the, the rest of the media industry, there's an understanding that you need to rely more on direct funding from readers versus advertisers um, to continue to flourish. So um, we definitely wouldn't rule it out in the future. But at this stage, um, we have been really pleased with the kind of reaction that people have had to the, in the contributions model. So and did you make good money from that? I mean, what kind of money did you make from donations? Well, I, think we made, we, I mean, we're still making, um, you know, sort of uh, getting contributions coming through that every day. Um, and it, it, I would say that is probably comparable to what you would expect if you were launching a paywall at this stage. But saying that, it's really early on and, you know, we will just have to wait and see how that goes and, um, you know, whether that's something that's sustainable. So are people going to lose their jobs? And if so, how many? Well, I have no plans like that at the moment. But again, you know, this is not a magic solution to the sort of challenges that we're facing. Um, Media was already under a lot of um, duress before we went into COVID and we're already having to go through a period of transformation and now like you know just about every industry and business we're going to have to really grapple with what's ahead and make sure we can get ourselves into the kind of shape that keeps us fit for the future but there is no you know I have no plan in front of me right now um, around jobs or products or anything like that. Are things improving for you under level two? Yes, they definitely are improving. I mean, we've gone we've gone from basically having very little advertising revenue um, to um, you know starting to see that pick back up as businesses are opening up again. So, are you a better prospect than NZME was then? <laughs> well, I was very supportive um, of the NZME merger process because. Um, I could see the need to do something that was going to help put New Zealand journalism on a stronger foundation. Um, but when it became clear um, that this was, that was not going to progress, um, you know, that so I just started to discuss the option of an MBO with nine. And I think um, it's a different option. You know, then it's not comparing apples with apples. Um, one of them is a, a merger that might allow some consolidation of, you know, back office costs and, and things like that. And the other is a chance for um, the business and the staff to take control of their own future and sort of, you know, bring that energy and ideas in there and, and see what we can achieve. So are you going to get rid of some of the newspaper titles? Will you sell off any of the newspapers? Well, all of our newspapers um, are profitable. or Certainly we're going into the COVID situation and during that time, we saw an increase in um, subscriptions, as well as sort of record digital audiences. Just naturally, people were seeking the news. Um, so but you've got to be realistic that, you know, people's habits are changing, advertising habits are changing down the track at some point in the future. Um, I, don't, I can't say that we will have all of our newspaper titles. So have you got the money to pay the next round of wages? Absolutely. And the rounds after that too. And that is Sinead Boucher, who is the new owner of Stuff.